Hello all, it's me, Andy from Blix Gaming. I all had a great weekend and a great day. It is warm in the UK and you know, I don't like it. Today's video, Motherboard Review, Asus Prime H510M-A. This comes in four versions. Um, I will put the four versions on the page somewhere. But uh, Asus's website, uh, information wise, is useless. I can't tell the difference between one and the other. It seems that they got the information copied from A to B. A bit useless, really. But uh, So I just put the pictures up. You can see the difference at the end of the day. There is a price difference at the end of the day. Okay, in the box, we've got. Quick insulation guide. We have a silver backplate IO shield. It does come in a plastic sealed bag. We have the old fashioned CD ROM. At the end of the day, now I don't use these, I find they're out of date. It's just easier to actually download the latest off their webpage. ACES safety information sheet basically telling you. Make sure you get it turned off before you play around with the settings and touching the hardware. Two times setter cables in black, one at a 45 degrees angle. One M2 pla plastic uh, little uh, support sticker. You got to put it under the M2. Basically, so you don't, when you push it down, you don't. Right, bend out of shape. M2 screw with um, the support and the standoff. Something you don't want to lose. Extremely small screws. Get that out of the way. So we've got the ball at the end of the day. It's a micro ATX. It's in silver and black. Got two heat sinks, one on the right there, and one on the M2. It comes with items what I don't think should be on here. Now this is where their web page is incorrect. Their web page doesn't mention the PS2s, and it doesn't mention, and it says this is a DVI port and not a VDA. Uh, their website is a bit uh, openless. To be honest with you. So on the ball we've got PS2s, VGA, DisplayPort, HDMI, USB 2 in black, USB 3.2 in blue times two, two more USB 2s, one Intel GigaLAN, on the sound block, we have a microphone, front speakers, back speakers. Come around to the other side, we have audio connector. We have a snip, sniff, or whatever pronounce it as, a digital uh, header. Um, a communication port. Going up, something I don't think is worth putting on there. We've got an RGB header. So there's actually two RGB headers and two addressable RGB headers. So two of them is the Asus Oro Sync and two of them are just third party uh, dual sort of stuff for your, your LED strips. We've got a um, Clear Cosmos jumper, uh, two USBs, headers, one SATA port facing upwards, a front panel I.O. block, um, so you on and off switch, reset switch. Uh, next to that is a speaker, header, which for these days I don't think you need because I can't remember seeing a speaker in a case these days. Uh, I mean, they are, is, there is some, but big decent cases don't come with them no more. Um, next to that is the TPM, 
which you uh, require for Windows 11. Now, obviously, it doesn't come with a module. Got to buy the module itself, separate. And it's got to be an Asus one because it's an Asus board, and you've got to buy the one for this board. Asus make several versions of it. Don't ask why, they just do. Um, and coming around from that, you got two more SATA ports facing outwards. Then you got another SATA port facing upwards. Then you got a USB 3.2 header. And then they 24 fin power. At the end of the day, then you got the other RGB um, addressable, uh, RGB addressable, then the other Aura Sync. So two Aura Syncs, two addressables, as I said earlier. You got CPU fan header, system fan header, another system fan header over here. So two system fan headers, one CPU header. Eight pin power connector for the CPU. There's no extras, it's just the 8 pin on its own. Now, I did notice that on the, I can't remember what they call them, they've got a funny name. Um, Asus have decided to put on your memory sockets, you only have to move two of the brackets, uh, clips to lock them in. The other two are reinforced. A bit different, I, was, I have seen that before, but you don't get it all the time. You got the M2, uh, Speedside Express 4, uh, Speedside Express 3, um, I think, 3 or 4, I'll have to check now, I can't remember what, what it is now. It's got the heatsink on it, in silver, um, I mean it's a good board, well, it looks like a good board, it's black and silver, and then they, uh, as I said, it's micro ATX. It's quite heavy, and you know, heavy means usually means well built. It again is a fault on their web page. It says it comes with um, a Q flash button. It doesn't come with a Q flash button. None of them come with a Q flash button. Uh, and there's a lot of loads of other information on there, which is incorrect. This is why I've got a funny feeling someone's looked at their web page and said, you know, your thing's incorrect. And Two of the balls don't have no info, <laughs> and the other two out what do have information is incorrect. So I don't know what's going on with Asus. They seem like get your life in gear, I think. Um, so yeah, I don't know what the phase design is because I can't get the information on it anywhere. I mean, if I was an electronic engineer, I could probably work it out by looking at the capacitors and that, but I don't know. Uh, it cost me £85 and then they, I think it goes up to, now the prices have changed according to their website. Now originally, last like six weeks ago, this was up to £100 and it's not that now. Um, it's basically around the £87, £90 mark, depending on where you go. But you got to remember, Retail prices at the moment in the PC market does not go to the price you end up buying. And then they, but you can buy this directly from Asus. So if they've got them in stock, you will get it at a price, the retail price. Um, what else? Um, I have got a video coming out uh, doing a temperature score. Um, an amount of watts being used, which I will post straight after I post of this one. Yeah, uh, test it against the Gigabyte and a B560 motherboard. And then they run in the Intel 11400F CPU. That's about it, really. Um, simple, just a basic motherboard. And then they Nothing glorified, and in day, I mean, being a budget, got to remember it's a budget board. I wouldn't put anything over an i5, the level four F, basically. That would be as far as I'd go, and in day, um, because at the end of the day, it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna have the the uh, 
the reliability to, to put in things like i9s, i7s, I, I wouldn't even go there. And you know, if you want that sort of stuff, then you need to spend 250, 300 pound on a motherboard. And then they, I'm not saying you can't put it in there. Yeah, it does support them, I think. <laughs> so, but um, you're risking uh, problems. So yeah, there we go. And then they, we will do a build on this board uh, in the next couple of weeks, maybe. Um, Let's see how well it goes. Okay, if you like the review, uh, as always, please subscribe. If you got this board already, uh, leave some comments up about it, see what you think. And if you think about buying a board uh, and want some answers on some stuff, leave some comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, that'll be it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Andy out. Have fun.